So let's suppose we have this bumblebee buzzing around the room. And at this very instant, the bumblebee is at this point B, which is a distance X from the, from the west wall of the room. It's a distance Y from the south wall of the room. And it's a distance or a height Z above the floor of the room. So we can completely describe the position of this bumblebee by these three numbers, x, y, and z. Now in mechanics, we like to write the position of our, of our particle, or in this case our bumblebee, with a vector. And we're going to call that position vector r. And if we were to write r into its components, we'd say it's a, it's a distance x in the i hat direction. It's a distance y in the j hat direction and a distance z in the k-hat direction. So the origin of this coordinate system is, 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 in this, is in this corner right here. And we can represent, again, the position as this vector. Again, a vector is something that has magnitude and it has direction. Its direction, you can see directly from the picture here. It's pointed, it's a vector that starts at the, whose tail is at the origin and whose tip is at the, at the point where the, at the location of the particle. And if we look at our expression for the vector right here, we can write its magnitude quite easily. You just take the sums of the squares of the components and take the square root of that whole thing. There's your magnitude, but if we think about what this means geometrically, that magnitude, the x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root, that's the distance of my particle, in this case my bumblebee, from the origin of my coordinate system. So this thing, this thing we've drawn here makes perfect sense as a vector, I think. Now before I go on, it's worth stating, or at least reiterating, that in mechanics, quantities, anything we write down, it has units of mass, or length, or time, or some combination of mass and length, or length and time, some combination of two of these, or all, maybe even all three of these. So my first question to you, just take a short break and think about it for a second. What are the units associated with position here? Now this question is one I hope is pretty easy and straightforward for you. Uh, the appropriate units for a position are a length, a length, right? X is the distance of the bumblebee from the, from the west wall, right? Y is the distance, or it's a length, from the south wall. You measure X and Y and Z in meters or in feet or in miles, kilometers, inches, centimeters. Units of length, right? So our position has units of length. Now I should also mention that these quantities x, y, and z here, they're, they're numbers that change in time, right? At one, at one instant, the, the bumblebee could be uh, a half a meter from the, from the wall, and a short time later it could be three meters from the wall, right? So x is changing in time. y is also a function of time, and so is z. These are all functions of time, which leads us to say that this vector r is a function of time. And this leads us to the next quantity of interest in mechanics. Here we're talking about velocity. And when I mention velocity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a definition. Velocity is a vector. And by definition, here's the definition, it is a time derivative of the position vector, like so. Now the first question you might ask, what does it mean to take a derivative of a vector? And if it hasn't, if that question has not crossed your mind, it should, because it's, it's not, it's not trivial. So when thinking about how you take a derivative of a vector, I'm going to go back to something that we know about, something that's easy to take a derivative of. That is, we're going to take a derivative of a function. So let's say here I have this function. It's a function of time. I'm calling it f. Now the derivative of this function, if you recall, just from the definition. It's this quotient right here. In the top, we have f of t1 and t0. So t0 is this place we're taking the derivative about. t1 is some point, let's say, time in the future. Call that t1. And what we do is we evaluate f at these two different points. So there's f at t0. And here's f at t1. And what I'm going to do is take the difference between these two f's. So f1 minus f0, f t1, f minus t0. And I'm going to divide that by the difference in time, so t1 minus t0. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, this quotient in the limit as the time 1 approaches time 0. So in other words, when this time between, or this duration between the two different times gets vanishingly small. And that's my derivative. So you've seen what happens when we take times very close together. In other words, when we let the time 1 
approach time zero, we get two times that are very close together and two f's that are very close together. And this quotient, the ratio of the change in f divided by change in time, this starts looking like a slope. So there's definition of a derivative of a function. The definition of derivative of a vector structurally is very similar. So when we define the velocity as a derivative of a position vector, we get something like this. That is, we take two position vectors, one at a time t0, the other one at a time t1, and we divide it by the difference in time, or the duration between the two different times. And then we take the limit of this thing as the later time approaches the original time. And voila, it's the complete analogous thing to what we had for functions. But of course, we have to think about what this means. What is the derivative, or what are the difference between these position vectors mean? And what, do we, what does it mean in the limit as time one as approaches time zero? So in keeping with the insect theme, I'm going to imagine we have an ant walking along a, a path that I've drawn here. Now you might have noticed that I've reduced this to two dimensions. It's harder to draw these vectors in three dimensions. So to keep things simple, we'll imagine it's walking in a plane. And let's say at some given time, the position vector of this ant is r at time t0. And a short time later, it's going to be this r at time t1. So recall in my definition of velocity, in the numerator of my quotient, I have this term that looks like a difference between two position vectors. So r at time 1 minus r at time 0. My first question to you is, what is that thing? Right? We've got the difference between two vectors. It's going to be another vector. What does that vector look like? Is it a vector that starts here and points to the middle point of those two vectors? vectors? It is a vector that starts here and then ends up over there? Is it a vector that starts here and goes the other way to over there? Uh, what is this difference vector? Now if you recall the definition of a difference vector, the, the difference in this case, r at 1, t1, and r at t0, it's the vector that begins at, t, at the tip of t0 and ends at the tip of t1. And if you want to check this, it's really easy to do because notice that this vector right here plus that vector right there should equal this one right there. So let's do it really quickly. That first vector is r at t0, so r at t0. The next vector is, is the quantity r t1 minus r t0. And what does that have to equal? Well, a better equal to r at t1, right? So here's r t0 plus r t1 minus r t0. Notice that this gets canceled by that, which just leaves us with r at t1. Uh-huh, so there we go, check. So now if I apply my definition of the derivative of the position vector, here's what I get. Notice in the numerator, I've got the difference between the position vectors. That was this guy right there. In the denominator, I have a difference in times. And of course, I'm taking the limit as time 1 approaches time 0. And that's important because I, the, the quotient's important because as I let time 1 approach time 0, uh, this point gets closer and closer to the original point right there. And that vector difference gets really small. But of course, the time difference is also getting small. So in the limit as time 1 approaches time 0, this quotient's going to be something that does not go to 0 generally. And the important thing to, to, to observe here is that as point at time 1 goes to point at time 0, this vector difference, it's going to approach something that's tangent. Remember, it's going to be a vector. It's going to be a vector that's tangent to the path at time 0. Now, what I just said bears repeating because it is the most important uh, outcome of this exercise. We just provided a rather rigorous argument that says the velocity vector the velocity vector defined by this limiting process is a vector which is tangent to the path. It is always tangent to the path. Velocity is tangent to the path. Don't forget it. Now before we end this video, let me throw in one more, one last question. What are the units of velocity? It's very important that we know units. So what are the units of velocity? Stop the video, uh, think for a second, and then come up with an answer before uh, restarting it. To answer this question, all you have to do is look at the definition of velocity. Notice in the definition I have a numerator and a, denom and a denominator. The numerator has a difference in position. We've already said that 
position is has units of length, right? So that numerator has units of length. The denominator has a difference in times, right? So denominator has a time. And that's all I have in my definition. So the units of velocity are length divided by time, or length per time. And you've probably heard of this. You look at, you drive down the road and look at your speedometer. What does it say? It tells you something miles per hour or kilometers per hour. That's a length per time. Miles is a length. Time is a time. Hour is a time. So that length per time is something you often probably call the speed. A speed is the magnitude of velocity. It's how fast you're traveling along your path. The direction of velocity is the direction of travel. It's tangent to the path. And that concludes this video.